did you know that people who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder they actually might be having issues with naming and even understanding their own emotions and we would refer to this as alexithymia and when someone comes to therapy it is actually quite important it can actually enhance the outcome of the treatment when person can actually put words to you know how they're feeling so for people who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder at times when they may be experiencing flashbacks very strong emotions they're gonna be triggered and that creates a lot of distress for them and then on the top of that when they cannot even put the words into how they're feeling that creates another layer of distress in addition to that some people they also they might be struggling to describe what is going through their mind and also to describe images um, that they represent their trauma for example and considering that someone for example is struggling with uh, describing the images of their trauma and at the same time if they have chosen to do the restructuring work within the cognitive behavior therapy then it makes it very difficult to actually go through this treatment some people they might be actually struggling to describe the how they're feeling emotionally what is going through their mind because maybe they grew up in an environment where talking about emotions and their thoughts wasn't really encouraged. In some households, maybe talking about emotions was even shamed. And considering that some people, they might have these difficulties of describing how they're feeling or what their thoughts are, or describing even the images of the trauma, it would be very helpful to actually find ways to help people to engage with therapy in a way where they actually feel maybe more comfortable, more safe to talk about their emotions and their images and their thoughts as well. Initially, it might be actually a good idea to help them to find words to describe emotions. And that can be done on examples, not only on those very extreme emotions when they feel extreme fear or extreme pain, but it might be actually easier to start encouraging them to describe the emotions maybe at the time when they come to therapy or maybe just they could think about the situations where maybe they feel actually very less distressed maybe situations where they actually feel happy and that's when maybe they could start describing their emotions and giving them also ideas whether it is uh, this word or that word so that would then perhaps help them to increase the vocabulary around those sensations that they're feeling another way how we can also help people to describe how for example they are feeling at the time it is introducing scales so if we say that so how distressed do you feel at this moment from zero to ten so again that might actually help someone to actually focus more all right so you know how am i feeling now and then from zero to ten they can then rate whether it is five or seven or, or three and those skills that can be introduced really at any time throughout the session so it could be at the beginning at the end in the middle and then you can compare this course as well so you know once you put that all in a perspective to the person that you're working with it actually can be very helpful to them so once you introduce for example those skills and when you take this course at the different times at therapy and once you put them in a perspective to them it can actually be very helpful for the person to actually see how their emotions they fluctuate throughout the, even that one hour when we're seeing them and specifically this rating from zero to ten how for example fearful and or anxious they might be feeling it is really good because that actually forces the person to stop and think what is going on for them some people they actually they might be start using this rating from like zero to ten and not only in a therapy but also outside therapy and by noticing and learning about how the person is feeling it can really enhance the work in a therapy and at the same time it can enhance the quality of their relationships even outside the therapy Another problem that people with post-traumatic stress disorder they might be experiencing in context of the emotions it is that they actually they might have difficulty with regulating their very extreme emotions and especially this can happen for people who experience early life trauma and who has been emotionally neglected. What may happen then in therapy whether someone is using the cognitive behavior therapy or any other approaches to work with 
their trauma. At some point, we're going to be talking about content of the trauma and what has happened to them. And that can act as a trigger to the person causing emotional dysregulation. And then as a result of that, people, they actually they might start drinking, using drugs or self-harming. And that's why normally in treatments for post-traumatic stress disorder, before we start working on the actual trauma, we, first of all, do a lot of uh, psychoeducation and we teach the person grounding techniques and techniques that help them to relax, uh, techniques that they help them to actually manage and regulate their emotions in a less risky way. Another way of as well helping someone to become more aware about their emotional responses, preventing people from becoming emotionally uh, overactivated, it is actually asking the person to name how other people are feeling. So that might be a starting point um, and then gradually maybe they can progress into naming how they are feeling. Another way how we can help someone to prevent them from becoming emotionally overwhelmed is actually encourage them to write a narrative about what has happened when they experienced the trauma and then as well encourage them to write another narrative uh, about the instance when, for example, they have been triggered, when maybe they experience a flashback, they can start these narratives of being very narrow descriptions, maybe just using like single words. And then with time, they can actually expand these two narratives by being able to describe what was going on around the actual trauma and also around the trigger time. It might be quite containing and as well normalizing. And at the same time, the person might in slow motion actually be able to see, all right, so that was what was going on then. And this is what is going on now. And also process of writing a narrative like that can also initiate the process of actually storing the trauma memories in the right place. So there's a chance that later on, those trauma memories, they're not gonna be triggered as flashbacks, but only as memories. And if you would like to learn more about this, you can go to my YouTube channel where I have actually video where I talk more in details about that. Another very simple ways of how we can help people to don't become emotionally overactivated in a therapy or even outside the therapy, it is by using the grounding techniques, relaxation techniques, breathing techniques, and for some people, it would be also very helpful if they could have a diary where they would write down what they eat, how they sleep, uh, when they exercise. By having this diary, it will actually help to notice whether maybe the sleeping routine is not that great, maybe the eating is not that great, maybe they need to exercise just a bit more. Because of all these very basic aspects of our life, they can actually have detrimental impact on this emotional activation for people who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. If you found this video any helpful, then please like it, subscribe, and I'm gonna see you in the next one then. Thank you, bye-bye.